Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to get pixel perfect full HD HDMI output from your original Commodore 64, complete with stereo audio. The process nowadays is surprisingly simple. You just locate the micro HDMI output on the back of the device, plug your monitor in, and you're ready to go. 1080p goodness with stereo audio, configurable scan lines, and more. But perhaps you'd like to know more about how we got here. It all started about a year ago when I bought one of these excellent boards from a developer known as Copper Dragon on GitHub. This is effectively a replacement board for the original RF modulator, which can also produce a nice and crisp RGB output. What caught my attention was the way the RGB video is generated. See, the VIC-2, the graphics chip of the Commodore 64, doesn't have a digital video output, and the analog video signal coming out of it is often noisy and distorted beyond repair. So just filtering or digitizing the VIX output is not enough to get a sharp video signal. Copper Dragon instead had the brilliant idea to grab the input of the VIC-2 by sniffing its digital pins through this interleaver board, and use that information to recreate pixel-perfect video frames from scratch within this FPGA. The digital video is then converted back to standard definition RGB analog and presented on this connector over here. After realizing that this was the only way to get a sharp video signal out of the Commodore 64, I decided to do something similar, but step up the game by upscaling the digital video to 1080p resolution and outputting it through HDMI, together with the digitized audio coming from the SID audio chip. And thus, after almost a year of hard work, I finally completed the development of the HD64, the definitive HDMI solution for the Commodore 64. Just like the solution from Copper Dragon, the HD64 is a replacement for the original RF modulator, which needs to be removed prior to installation. It connects to the motherboard with two pin headers mounted on the same sockets used by the RF modulator, and is compatible with all motherboard models, including the so-called shortboard I have here. Again, just like with the Copper Dragon board, a special interleaver needs to be placed between the VIC-2 and the motherboard. Its purpose is to carry the relevant digital signals to the HD64, while the analog audio from the SID is grabbed directly from the RF modulator header, digitized and merged with the HDMI video output. And with that done, we're pretty much ready to plug into any modern TV and enjoy some retro gaming in full HD. In its default configuration, the HD signal is very sharp, but with a simple configuration utility which runs directly on the C64, we can turn scan lines on or off and even add some blur with anti-aliasing to get closer to the original experience. The color palette can be adjusted at will and the image can be stretched from 4x3 to 16x9 aspect ratio, and I will soon add adjustable overscan as well. Much like any RF modulator replacement, the HD64 also amplifies the original analog video, which is still available on the AV connector, both in composite and S-video format. Analog audio from the SID can be fed directly to the HD64 through the RF modulator header, or it can be provided externally in stereo through this header over here, which is ideal for dual SID setups. So how does the HD64 work exactly? All information necessary to generate a video frame is available on the memory bus between the VIC and the processor. This includes clock, pixel and color data, and register values. This information is sniffed passively by the HD64 and fed to a VIC2 emulator implemented inside the FPGA that produces an identical digital copy of the VIC's video output with a latency well below one millisecond. The main challenge though is to understand where a video frame starts so that the data on the memory bus can be interpreted correctly. This can be done by looking at the first two bits of the address bus. By looking at these lines for a few consecutive frames, it is possible to identify a special pattern used to refresh the computer's memory. This pattern can be used to determine exactly when each frame and each line starts, and to synchronize the entire video processing chain to the original VIC. If you're interested in learning more about how the VIC-2 chip works and how to replicate it on an FPGA, I've published an exact copy of my implementation on GitHub that can be simulated entirely in Python. In fact, I would actually invite anyone to check out the link to the repo in the description. As for the next steps, the first few boards have already been shipped to beta testers, so I expect the first production batch to be available early 2025. In the meantime, please feel free to join the SPL community on Discord to stay up to date about the latest developments. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time.